Greetings everyone. For today, I'm going to speak about statistics for pressure, descriptive statistics, and correlation using JAS. JAS is a statistical software that you can download from the internet. It's free unlike other statistical software and this talk is meant to give you a refresher about the basics of statistics like central tendency, variability, and other related stuff. Also, we're going to include correlation and how can we understand these numbers using JAS and how can we create our own write-up. I hope that this talk will be helpful to you and I hope that after this talk, you'll be able to share this knowledge with your students or your co-workers. Okay, so let me introduce myself. I'm Renz Luis de Montano. I'm a registered psychometrician. I'm also a college faculty at Lyceum of the Philippines University. I teach psychological assessment and psychological statistics. Okay, I'm also a national lecturer in RG Review Center, and I talk about the four subjects in the board exam. And statistics has been one important subject in both the school and in the review setting. So that's it. Now, let's proceed. Before we begin, I would like to extend my gratitude to the officers of the PAP Calabarzon Mimaropa chapter, especially to Sir Nathan Aganan for allowing me to have, to have this webinar with you guys. So it's a pleasure to meet all of you and I hope that you will learn a lot in this webinar. So I also hope to meet some of you in the future um, in the future um, seminars, workshops that will be offered by the Psychological Association of the Philippines. Okay, so let's proceed. This is the first part of my discussion basic statistical concepts before we proceed to the actual computation let us let me refresh you on some of the things you need to remember that will be very useful in the discussion later on so as a researcher we would like to study a lot of things a lot of phenomenon a lot of things happening around us the pandemic the events politics etc psychological phenomenon and there are some things that are easier to study than others. Some, some events occurred in the past, some are occurring in the present, and sometimes we use statistics to predict something that will happen in the future. So imagine if you are a researcher who would like to study about the experiences of those who joined the EDSA revolution, then it, it looked like this when it happened back then. But as a researcher, kung baga nakikita mo dyan, parang kung i-interviewin natin sila isa't isa, uh, isa-isa, may makukuha tayong data from all of them. And kung baga yung experiences nila, parang substitute natin ng number. Ikinakwantify natin yun. At tapos, statistics, it will allow us to organize the data that we were able to obtain from these people. Okay, so... It allows us to understand what they are going through. It allows us to look at the population, to look at their experiences. It allows us to draw conclusions about the experiences of the people in psychological statistics, of course. Um, there are some other uses for statistics in other fields. Okay, so same goes for, say for example, the translation. So if you would like to study the experiences of those who joined the translation, then maybe you could give out survey questionnaires after the event, after the procession, and then afterwards, you're going to analyze it to make sense of the number. Okay, the numbers al alone, they do not make sense. So statistics allows us to organize these numbers in a very meaningful fashion so that we'll be able to see how do these different variables connect with each other. So that's the question, how am I supposed to study them? Okay, how are we going to dissect their experiences? What are the things that we need to look at? So let's see this. First and foremost, you should identify your population. So, wag na, wag na, wag natin yan. so what's your population in your study? Are you studying PWDs? Are you studying students? 
Are you are we going to study um, politicians, etc.? So the keyword for population is that they are your target respondents. Okay, so the target respondents nade. Another keyword is that complete set. So lahat kasale sa population. So if you would like to study the experiences of the students, then what we're talking about is you should give out survey questionnaires to all the students in a certain school. However, we are familiar that not all the time makukuha natin lahat ng members ng population. Bakit? Una, practicality. Bakit tayo mag interview ng 30,000 students and if we could simply get 1,000 or less than 1,000. Okay? So, minsan sa budget natin, hindi natin magagawang magpa-survey sa kanilang lahat. At marami pang ibang factors like participant mortality, ibig sabihin nag-drop out sila, or yung mga participants na hindi natin mahanap. Kunyari, um, we've had this study before about irregular students. I hope you can imagine how difficult it is to contact all of the irregular students in a school. So, if kung hindi natin makuha lahat ng nasa population, you know what's next? We're going to obtain what we call a sample. So, the sample is the subset of the population. So, here's a good analogy. If we're trying to study your blood, gusto natin aralin yung dugo mo, hindi naman natin kukunin lahat ng dugo sa katawan mo. Aaralin natin, tapos pagkatapos, ibabalik na lang natin sa katawan mo pag naaral na natin. Well, it doesn't have to be that way. But rather, kukuha lang sila ng sample ng dugo sa iyo. Tapos yun yung aaralin nila. So, ang paniwala natin is that the sample should represent the population pero hindi yan nangyayari all the time. That's why marami tayong mga sampling techniques that would allow us to have greater confidence that the sample is indeed representing the population. May mga theories behind it saying that the greater the sample, mas maraming members ang sample, mas nare-represent niya ang population. Well, that's the simple way to look at it. Of course, mas marami pang ibang mga factors like representativeness, saan mo sila kinuha, culture, location, etc. Okay, so so that's it. That's the sample. So let's take a look at some other terms. Variable is anything that changes from one person to another, like height, weight, intelligence, extraversion. So yan po inaaral natin. So if something doesn't change, it's, it's not a variable, it's constant. Okay, so ano ba yung mga halimbawa ng mga bagay na hindi nagbabago? Well, ito po yung dami ng oras sa isang araw, 24 hours, dami ng araw sa isang linggo, 7 days, at marami pang iba. Sa so, dami ng peraso sa isang dosena, 12 pieces. Okay, um, may mga mas maraming variables kesa constant like yung amount ng sleep na nakukuha mo araw-araw. So, that's a variable. So, ito yung ini-illustrate natin dito sa picture sa baba. So, we vary. Variable, something that varies. Something na magkakaiba sa atin. Okay, so, let's see some other terms. Okay, so here are the various types of variables. First, we have here what we call independent variable. So, pag sinabi independent variable, ito po yung minamanipulate natin. So, Ito po yung sinusubukan nating baguhin. Like for example, our independent variable is the presence or the absence of a certain medication. So si group A walang medicine. So anong tawag dito? Control group. While si group B makaka-receive ng medicine. So sila yung um, experimental group. Okay. Sila yung treatment group. Okay. So minsan, um, marami pang grupo. Like three groups, four groups. So this, it is the one being manipulated. So, one thing that I would like to point out about this definition is that this is a definition coming from experimental psychology because as you know it, in experimental psychology, manipulation is very important. So, why do we manipulate the variable? It's because we're trying to know how much these manipulations will affect other variables. Okay, so this definition might be a little bit misleading because not all IVs or independent variables can be manipulated. So, yun naman yung sa correlational research. For example, 
traits. Okay, pagkakaiba na extraversion ng lahat ng estudyante mo, well, that's little, a little bit difficult to manipulate. So, this is a definition coming from experimental psych. Because I like experimental psych, so ito lang yung napili kong definition, but it can be defined in a number of ways. But the main idea here is that the IV is the one that you try to change, try to manipulate, or you try to investigate how it will affect other variables. So let's look at another example here. So for example, three groups. So first group, walang receive na medication. Control group, or in some instances, they can be the placebo group. Si group B, isang um, pill, while si group C ay dalawa yung matatanggap niya. So that can be another way to manipulate your uh, variables in this scenario. So, may kita natin, yung bang pagkakaiba-iba ng amount ng doses ng medication, meron ba yung epekto dun sa isang bagay na inoobserbahan mo? At ano yung inoobserbahan mo? Okay, so, makikita natin yun mamaya. So, here's one more thing. Um, you made some kids watch either a neutral or a violent TV show. So, will it affect something else na iniimbestigahan natin. So, ayan. Those are different ways to manipulate your IV. So, IV is also known as it is your predictor. Okay? It is called predictor by some other researchers, by some other authors in statistics. It's called the predictor. So, if meron tayong predictor, meron tayong dependent variable. Ito yung result ng manipulation natin. Ito yung kinalabasan. So, a, pre, um, a predictor in your IV, a dependent variable, this is the criterion. This is the outcome variable or the result. So, let's see. May relationship nga ba talaga ang panonood ng violent TV shows sa aggression ng mga bata? Well, marami ng iba't ibang result ang mga study na nagtake ng ganyang direction. Some results are saying right now na Hindi consistent. Sometimes um, violent TV shows make people violent. Sometimes it doesn't. So, may crisis sa replicability ng result. Well, that's a topic for another day. Let's see some other terms here. So, some other statistical terms. A statistic is a number calculated in a sample data that quantifies a characteristic of the sample. So, ano yung mga statistics? So, Hindi siya yung statistics na may S. It's statistic na walang S. Ibig sabihin, statistics is the field that we study. Statistic is a number. So, don't be intimidated by this term. I don't want this term to be intimidating to you. A statistic is a number that represents a sample. So, ito yung mean. Kunyari, mean ng grupo, standard deviation ng grupo, correlation ng sample na yun. So, yun yung mga statistic. So, Minsan na nakukuha natin, if you're lucky enough to get your entire population, hindi na statistic yung tawag dyan. It's a population. So, for example, the mean income of all Filipinos, make sure na lahat ng Filipino na interview mo, it's no longer a statistic, it is a parameter. So, population na ang pinag-uusapan dito, population mean, population standard deviation, population variance, etc. So, those are some basic terms in statistics. Okay, so just one example here, exercise. A researcher wanted to study how gratitude affects one's helping behavior or helping intention, I'm sorry. In a college with a total of 500 students, he recruited 50 to join his experiment. He divided them into two groups. Okay, and then what happened is this. They were asked to encode something from the book in MS Word. Pinag-type sila. Si group A, Pagkatapos sila mag-type, naka-receive sila ng thank you from the experimenter, while si group B, hindi. So si group A, siya si experimental group, si group B, si control group. And then after that, he asked them how willing are they to help again in the same task. 1 to 5. Okay, so let's identify the IV and the DV here. So this is an interesting study I found online. Okay, because when I was in college, I was studying the effect of gratitude to helping intention and helping behavior. Okay, so ito po. Isa sa mga research design po ito na nahiram ko sa isang study sa Google Scholar. So, what does it say? Ano ba yung IV natin? So, what did we try to manipulate here? It's the absence or presence of thank you or gratitude. 
So, ang tinitingnan natin, kapag ba absent or present yung thank you, may epekto ba yun doon sa saan? Helping intention. So, the IV is the thank you, presence or absence, or gratitude, if you would like to make it more formal. The DV is the helping intention. How did we measure the DV? Rating from 1 to 5. Sa Likert scale. So, that's one example. Study. Okay, so after the basics, why don't we go to the levels of measurement? So, I hope you can recall this from your studies. Let's see if fresh pa ba sa ating memory. So, let's see some examples. First, the weakest level of measurement is nominal. When we say nominal, we place cases into categories and then we count them. So, ang nominal ay madalas na tina tinatawag din po na categorical. So, nominal or categorical, kunyari ito, the brand of your cell phone, Redmi, Vivo, Oppo, Apple, o kaya anong bangko ang saang banko ka merong account, BPI, BDO, Metrobank, etc. Bakit sila naging nominal? Bakit sila categorical? Kasi po, kung isa-substitute natin yung mga names na ito with numbers, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay? So, what does this mean? Porket ba gumagamit ka ng Apple, mas magaling ka sa gumagamit ng Vivo kasi 4 ka, tapos siya 2 lang. Hindi naman sa ganun. Okay? So, we may substitute num um Etong words, pwede natin palitan ng numbers. Pero, hindi ibig sabihin na kapag mas mataas yung number mo, ay mas higit ka dun sa lower number. Okay, so, meaningless numbers. They are just there for categorizing. It doesn't, you should not interpret them in a numerical sense. So, anong tawag dyan? Dummy coding. For example, in SPSS or JAS, in the dummy code natin, 1 equals male, 2 is equal to female. Okay, so yun po yung dummy coding. Now, so that's for nominal or categorical. Another example of categorical would be cell phone number. If may tao na ang number niya, 0911111111 hanggang dulo, and may kaibigan siya na 0999999 hanggang dulo, it doesn't mean na mas magaling si 09999. Because walang meaning itong mga numbers na ito. They are just there to categorize something. Okay, so... Huwag tayo mag-compare na ay mas maganda yung kotse ko kasi tingnan mo yung plate number ko 999 sa'yo 444. It doesn't have to be like that. Okay? Representations na itong mga numbers na ito. Okay. So, another example is who's your favorite character in a TV show? So, sabihin natin kasi ba't ba natin ito dummy code? Hindi alam ni SPSS paano basahin itong mga mga words na ito. So, substitute natin yung numbers. So, if my favorite kang character at si number 3, hindi ibig sabihin na mas magaling si number 3 kay number 1. Okay, representations na itong mga numbers na ito. Next, categorical pa rin po ang ordinal, but the difference is that in ordinal, there is a right way to put them in order. So, may tamang pagkakasunod-sunod itong mga categories na ito. At kapag sinunod natin yung tamang order nila, may meaning sila. So, eto, categories pa rin naman yung educational attainment, pero meron silang tamang pagkakasunod-sunod. Na kung ikaw ay nasa graduate school, ikaw ay mas mata merong mas mataas sa educational attainment compared to someone who is in senior high school. Okay, meron siyang tamang pagkakasunod sunod. Okay, so for example, anong pinagkaiba ng nominal at ordinal? Nagtanong ka sa isang tao, sino yung mga sumali sa singing contest? Sinabi niya si si Anna, si Grizzly, at si Timothy. Okay, so hindi mo alam anong pagkakasunod-sunod ni Anna, ni Grizzly, at ni Timothy. So tinanong mo, sinong nanalo? Ay nanalo si Timothy. Pangalawa si Anna, pangatlo si Grizzly. So from nominal, you transform it into ordinal by asking kung ano yung ranggo nila. However, kahit alam mo yung ranggo nila, hindi mo alam kung ano yung actual na difference nila sa isa't isa. What do I mean by that? Posible ba na yung top 1 ay malayo compared kay top 2, pero si top 2 ay malapit kay top 3? Pwede. Pero hindi siya kayang ipakita ng ranggo. Okay? 
Yun yung limitations ng ordinal. So, saan ako papunta dito? Wala siya nung tinatawag na equal intervals. Another example ng ordinal ay position sa company or yung managerial, supervisory, rank and file. So, meron siyang tamang pagkakasunod-sunod. Another example na makakarelate tayong lahat ay sa IQ testing. Okay? Gifted, high average, or average. So, ordinal siya kasi di ba yung IQ, ano yan eh? 100, 100, 110, 115, 120. So, kung ang isang tao ay 100, yung katabi niya 103, pareho silang average. Ano nangyari? Hindi talaga sila magkasinggaling, pero nung kinategorize natin sila, napunta sila sa isang kategory. Yan yung weakness ng ordinal. Hindi niya na ipapakita yung actual differences ng mga tao sa isa't isa. So, kinaklump up niya together yung mga, yung mga tao, yung mga values na yan. Kinakategorize niya. So, yun yung weakness niya. When I was in college, ang ginagamit namin na grading system, hindi po yung typical na 1 to 4, but rather, we use the pang high school, quote and unquote, na grading system, yung mga 98, 96, 97, that's what we see in the student portal, because the point of our school administrators is, gusto nilang maipakita sa students yung actual differences, kung sino talaga yung nag-excel, sino yung naka-98, sino yung naka-96, because they believe that if we give 1, 1.25, 1.5, edi si 99 at si 100, pareho na silang uno. So, hindi natin makikita sino yung talagang mas magaling na student. Well, that's their belief sa aking collegiate institution. So, yun yung ordinal yun. Yung mga 1, 1.25, 1.5, typically ginagamit siya example sa ordinal. Okay? Ordinal. So, ayan. Is, bakit din ito ordinal? Hottest, warm, average. So, alam natin, kunyari, na pinakamainit sa Tugigaraw, sumunod sa Pangasinan, tapos average sa Metro Manila, pero hindi natin alam kung ano yung pagitan nila sa isa't isa. Okay? Magiging interval siya kapag kinuha natin yung actual na temperature. So, ayan, 37, 35, 32. This is just an example. So, it interval indicates exact distance and it doesn't it does not have absolute zero. So, that's the weakness of interval. Wala siyang absolute zero. So, what does that mean? If you get a zero temperature, it doesn't mean that walang temperature. Okay, so that's a very familiar exam, example to all of us here na nakikinig. So, maraming mga bagay na interval. Okay, pero... Meron pang mas maganda sa interval at yan ang ratio. So, ratio, okay, katulad siya ng interval pero meron siyang absolute zero. Like, look at this. Yung strongest person, ito nasa left, in ordinal ito eh. So, nung ginawa natin ratio, nakita natin yung mismong bigat na kaya nilang buhatin. Tapos ito, 90, 95 kg, 110 kg. Nakita na natin yung kanilang pagitan sa isa't isa actual na pagitan sa isa't isa. So, that's the advantage of ratio. So, typically, ang ratio nakikita natin ito sa mga yung ginagamit sa physics, kilometers per hour. So, if 0 km per hour ang kotse mo, ibig sabihin hindi ka umaandar. Okay? Kung, what else? Kunyari, nagtanong ako, ilan ang third year students sa university nyo? Dahil sa K-12, sabi mo, wala kaming third year students, eh di ibig sabihin zero. Zero wala talaga. Okay? So, Ratio, okay. Um, ito, weight. If zero weight, ibig sabihin, wala talaga nakalagay doon sa weighing scale. So, zero means absence. Okay, so, another way to know that it is ratio is, sa, ang pinagkaiba ng ratio at interval, ganito. Sa ratio, kaya mo sabihin na mer doble yung amount niya. So, what do I mean by that? Parang ganito. Kunyari, 20 degrees sa Manila, tapos sa ibang lugar, 40 degrees. You cannot conclude na doble yung init dun sa lugar na yun kasi walang zero temperature. Eh. Sa ratio ganito, kunyari sinabi mo, tatlo yung kaibigan ko, ikaw, anim kaibigan mo, sure tayo na doble yung dami ng kaibigan na meron siya. 
kung 20 years old ka at 40 years old siya, 2 times yung edad, yung edad mo. Okay? Dinoble niya yung edad mo. Okay? So, that's the advantage of ratio. So, why did I talk about this? Because, bakikita natin ito ulit kapag ginamit na natin yung software. In summary, nominal can show differences. Ordinal can show differences and magnitude. So, may direction na. Interval can show difference, magnitude equal intervals, but ratio is the best because it shows difference, magnitude equal intervals, and it has absolute zero. Okay. So, let me talk about measures of central tendency. So, for example, you were trying to ask around the community, and then for some reason, okay, so... Nagtatanong-tanong ka, ilan ang dami ng members ng family sa bahay niyo? Then for some reason, lahat ng kabarangay mo, sabi nila, apat. Kakaiba yung barangay nila kasi hindi nagbabago-bago yung numbers. <laughs> hindi siya nagbabari. So the question here is, how will you write it in your research paper? Will you write it as, sabi ng mga kabarangay ko, ito po ang dami ng tao sa bahay nila. Four, 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 four. Even though, Tama naman yan, pero that's not the best way to write it. So, hindi siguro maganda yung letter A. Tingnan natin letter B. Choose one number that will represent them all. Mas okay ata yan. Sabihin mo, sa barangay namin, lahat ng bahay ay merong four family members. So, mas maganda sigurong pakinggan yun. Okay, so that's just my introduction. What if the situation is like this? Tinanong mo, how many... Um, how much weight have you lost in kilograms? Okay, lately, in the last um, five months. Ayan. Ayan yung sagot ng mga tinanong mo sa'yo. The question here is, is it still easy to choose one number that will represent lahat ng numbers na ito? Mahirap na. Okay? Pero hindi ibig sabihin na imposible dahil may tatlong paraan akong ipepresent sa inyo para ma-represent natin itong data set na ito. First, ayusin natin in order yung data set. Let's arrange them from least to greatest. Then, why don't we report the most recurrent number? Ibig sabihin, bakit hindi natin i-report yung number na madalas maulit? In this case, ano yun? Okay, yung 6. Okay, sabihin mo, karamihan sa mga natanong ko, sabi nila, gumaan daw sila ng 6 kilograms. However, what's the weakness of this? Does it give justice to the person who lost 55 kilograms? I don't think so. It doesn't, 6 doesn't represent all the data in the distribution. Yet, it's a quick way to report the data. Then, we can do something like this. There's another proposition. I in order natin yung data, then hatiin natin sa gitna. Kung yung number sa gitna, yun yung report natin. Okay. Iba-iba yung sagot nila sa akin, pero ang gitna niya 11. So, that's one way to report the data. However, what's the weakness of this approach? Same weakness as the first one. It doesn't give justice to the person na pumayat ng 55 kilograms. Okay. So, pero compared to the first one, mas malapit naman siguro yung 11 sa 55. However, mal malayo pa rin talaga, eh, di ba? So, Here's another. Here's another suggestion. Why don't we compute for the average? So get the total of everything, then divide it by the n or the sample size, and then the average is 16. So from 6, naging 11, naging 16. Ano yung pinakamalapit sa 55? Yung 16. Bakit? Kasi ba't siya naging 16? Nahatak siya nung mga matataas na numbers na itong dalawa na sobra-sobra ang ipinaya. So, this is what we call, these are the measures of central tendency. So, para saan ang measures of central tendency? So, instead of reporting everything, instead of reporting big data, why don't we choose one number that will try to represent all the data, all the numbers in the data set? The first one is the mean. So, ito yung huli natin ginawa. So, the mean is the sum of scores divided by the number of scores or the sample. 
Okay, so ito po. May dalawa siyang simbolo. Sometimes it's mu, sometimes it's x bar. So, ang mu po ay ginagamit kapag ang pinag-uusapan ay population, ang x bar ginagamit kapag ang pinag-uusapan ay sample. So, what have you noticed? I just want to reiterate that in statistics, when we use Greek letters, we're talking about the population. When we use um, English alphabet letters, we're talking about the sample. So, maybe for some, um, it's your first time hearing about that. So, remember that very important information. So, ito po. So, same lang naman ang formula ng sample population. May nag-iiba lang po yung symbol. Okay, so attention to details. Ang weakness ng mean is that it is affected by extreme values. Later, I'm going to show you one example. And another characteristic of the mean is that the sum of all deviations around the mean is equal to zero. So, what's the meaning of that? Let me show you. For example, meron ka pong 6 na kapatid. Ito po yung mga edad nila. spread natin. Tapos, ang average na edad ng mga magkakapatid ay 16. Let me emphasize something here. Ang average yung 16, pero wala ni isa sa inyo ang 16 years old. That's the weakness of the mean. Okay? Wala ni isa ang 16 years old. Anyway, so, ano po yung nasa right side? Okay, so, as you can see here, sabi ng second column, x minus mean, or x minus mean in sim um, symbol. Okay? So, bakit po mu ang ginamit natin? Siyempre, nakuha natin yung buong population, yung lahat ng kapatid natin, natanong mo sa population yan, no longer sample. So, anong gagawin natin sa x minus mean? Ibig sabihin, ito po yung x, lahat yan, x, x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, hanggang baba, x yan lahat. Ibig sabihin, bawat score, ima-minus natin sa mean. 8 minus 16, negative 8. 15 minus 16, negative 1. 18 minus 16, 2. 19 minus 16, 3. 21 minus 16, 5. Okay? Guess what? Using your calculator, kung ito total nyo silang lahat, is it, it's equal to 0. Bakit? May negative, may positive, they cancel each other out. Bakit? Add natin lahat ng negative. This would be negative 10. Add natin lahat ng positive. 5 plus 3, 8 plus 2, 10. Negative 10 plus positive 10. Cancel each other out, 0. So that's an interesting characteristic of the mean. Ito yung tinatawag natin na deviation. So if you search Google what deviation means, ito yung parang paglayo. So, sa deviation, makikita natin, gaano kalayo ang bawat score sa mean? Ibig sabihin, tingnan nyo, ano yung pinakamalaking deviation? Absolute value, don't think of the symbol. Ano yung pinakamalaking deviation? 8. Okay, ibig sabihin, etong number na ito, ang pinakamalayo sa average. Ang pinakamaliit na deviation ay 1. Ito ang pinakamalapit sa, yung dalawang 15, pinakamalapit sa mean. Ibig sabihin, pag lumalaki ang value ng deviation, mas malayo siya sa mean. What else? If the deviation, if the value is negative, it means that the x is below the mean. Tingnan nyo, lahat ito below the mean eh. Kaya nag-negative. Lahat ng nandito, lahat ng mas mataas sa 16 ay above the mean. Kaya lahat sila ay positive. Another example, the number of COVID cases in the country in the one week ito sa April na kinuha ko. So, sa isang linggo, Monday to Friday, in average ko lahat, 246 yung average. So, itry natin itong values na ito. I-minus natin lahat sa mean. So, thrice tayo, three times tayo na nag-below sa mean. Okay? Ang pinakamalayo sa lahat ng division is this one, April 14. Bakit? Ang laki ng jump niya, Comparing to 246, ang laki ng 291. That's why it has the largest deviation. Ito ang pinakamalayo. Pinakamalapit sa mean, ito, yung 16.4. 230, 246, hindi masyadong nagkakalayo. So, the total of all deviation will be 0. Okay, so, minsan hindi na po x minus mean ang ginagamit dito. 
sometimes it's called division itong etong column na ito. Bakit po natin ginamit x bar instead ng mu? Because ang ginawa natin, kumuha lang tayo ng limang araw na merong new cases sa COVID, pero kung kinuha natin lahat ng araw, I can use the symbol ng mu. Okay, pero ito sample lang kasi itong kinuha natin. Next, why don't we talk about sports psychology? So, in the last five games of the NBA, before the league has been suspended, these were the scores of LeBron James. So, he averaged 30.4 in those five games. So, ito yung divisions nila. Ang pinakamalayo ay ito. Yung time na naka-19 lang siya sa kumpara sa kanyang average na 30.4. So, the total of all divisions will be equal to 0. The next way to obtain, uh, the next measure of central tendency is the median or the midpoint, ang gitna ng distribution. So, how does it compare to the mean? The median, okay, is the exact um, center, center point, the midpoint of the distribution. So, ito po yan. Now, um, mad mabilis lang makuha ang median. How? The median is the centermost score if the number of scores is odd. So, if odd number ang dami ng mga participants mo, kung ano nasa gitna kapag in order mo. Pero kapag even, dalawa yung nasa gitna, ang gagawin mo, i-add mo pareho sila. Okay, add mo sila pareho yung dalawa mo nasa gitna. Then the average of those two is the median. Well, we're not going to do manual computations today. What's the difference between the mean and the median? So, let's take a look. Example number one, kunyara nagtanong ka, um, ilan ang, um, ilan ang, ilan, uh, mag magkano ang dala na pera ng mga bata sa isang, um, playground. So, may mga bata, syempre, maliit lang na amount ng pera yung dala nila. So, nagtanong, magkano yung dala mo? So, in average natin. So, the average is six. The median is also six. Then what if one day, example number two, meron silang kaibigan na maswerte, pinadala ng 100. I-average natin. Tumaas ba yung average? Yes, kasi naapektuhan siya ng no extreme value. However, what happens sa median? Hindi siya nabago. What if may bata na ang baon niya 1,000? Meron siya 1,000 from his parents. Look at the average. But look at, look at the median. So the difference between the mean and the median is that the mean is easily affected by extreme values pero ang median ay hindi masyadong nahatak ng extreme values. So the conclusion here is that kapag aware ka na maraming extreme scorers or extreme values, maybe you can report the median instead of the mean in your research. Why? Statistics can be deceiving. Say for example, socioeconomic status or income. Kapag na-report natin ang mean, pwedeng mahatak ng mga sobrang yaman yung mga kababayan natin na may hirap. Sabihin natin, ay, nakakaluwag naman pala ang mga Pilipino kasi mataas yung mean income. So that can be misleading. So perhaps they can report the median instead of the mean. Okay, so, eto po yun. Okay, sa so, kung normally distributed kasi ang data mo, Magkalapit lang ang mean tsaka median or minsan pareho pa nga eh. Pero kapag tagilid ang distribution ng data mo, okay, magkalayo na ang mean at ang median. Ito yung sinasabi ko. Kunyari maraming mahirap, konti ang mayaman, nahatak ng konting mayaman yung income, yung mean income. Tingnan nyo, ang layo ng mean sa actual na uh, sa, kung nasan yung karamihan, kaya pwede natin i-report ang median. Okay. At binaliktad lang yung situation dito sa kabila. Kunyari, nagpa-exam ka, maraming mataas yung score, pero kinuha mo yung mean, eh meron kang bagsak na estudyante, mahatak ni average. Pero pag nireport mo yung median, ano mangyayari? Hindi siya masyadong apektado ng mga extreme scorers. So, those are the pros and cons of these different measures of central tendency. And the last thing is the mode, the most recurrent number in the distribution. So, ang ginawa mo sa mode is that tinignan mo lang ano yung pinaka na ulit na value. It's the quickest way to report. Okay. The um, quickest way to report the measure of central tendency. Ito yung mabilis na paraan na i-report yung data. 
yun nga lang, it has its weaknesses, pero ang advantage niya is that kanina na alala niya sa age, ang average nila 16, pero wala ni isa sa kanila ang 16 years old. Ang average naman ng mo, ang advantage naman ng mode is that sa mode, pag sinabi natin mode niya 6, totoong maraming nakakuha ng 6. So, that's one advantage of using the mode. Okay. So, meron tayong tinatawag na bimodal. Kapag bimodal, ang distribution, ibig sabihin, dalawang beses nag-peak ang distribution. Kanyan sa grab, uh, grab car ratings, marami nagbigay ng 2, marami nagbigay ng 4, nagbigay ng 4, dalawa ang magiging peak ng distribution. Okay, so, let's proceed to measures of variability. So, variability, we have 3, we have the range, the standard deviation, denoted by S kapag sample, or sigma kung um, population. And the variance is actually the square of the standard deviation, S squared or sigma squared. So first, ang pinakamadali po sa kanila ay ang range. So the range is the difference between the highest and the lowest score. The, the formula of the range is, um, range is equal to highest score minus lowest score. So madali lang. So, kunyari, ang highest number of COVID cases in one day is 545 and the lowest is 100. So, 545 minus 100, the range is 445. So, range um, talks about the extreme. However, it doesn't talk about the numbers in the middle. So, yun po ang weakness ng range. That's why we have the standard deviation and the variance. So, paano makukuha ang variance? Naalala niyo pa ba ito kanina? So, di ba kapag tinotal natin silang lahat, ang magiging total nila ay zero. So, paano nakukuha ang variance? So, sa variance, para makuha natin siya, ang gagawin natin, lahat ng deviation ay i-square natin. Bakit natin i-square? Kaya siya nagsisiro kasi may negative. Para matanggal natin yung negative, imumultiply natin itong mga values na ito, lahat sila sa sarili nila. Matatanggal natin yung negative sign. So, hindi lang siya deviation. Magiging deviation squared na. So, how will it look like? So, we should remove the negative values and it will look like this. Minultiply sa sarili 8 times 8 64. 1 times 1 is equal to 1. 2 times 8 equals 4. 5 times 5 is equal to 25. And then, let's add all of them at eto na po yung total nila. So, in-square natin, tapos in lahat. So, anong tawag dito? Yan yung sum of squares, yung in na lahat na in-square. So, kaya siya sum of squares. And to get to our variance, what we need to do is this. Here's the variance formula. Variance is equal to sum of squares divided by the n or the sample size o yung dami ng participants, dami ng kapatid mo. So, anim. So, ayan. 104 divided by 6. Your variance is 17.33. However, remember na in-square natin lahat sila. So, kailangan natin tanggalin yun. Kailangan natin ibalik yun sa dati. So, para maibalik natin sa dati, ano kailangan natin gawin? So, how do we transform the variance into standard deviation? Let's see that. Okay, so, ang gagawin natin, so, ito yung nakuha natin kanina, di ba? 17.33. We simply have to square root. Okay, square root natin yung, ito yung formula niya eh. The, okay, so, para matanggal natin po yung squared, square root natin, ikakancel natin yung mga yan, tapos, 17.33 yung, yung ating value, ang mangyayari, magi, ang kanyang magiging standard deviation is 4.33. 16. So, what have you noticed? Natanggal na yung square. Okay, sigma na lang siya. And the sigma is the symbol for the um, standard deviation. Okay, so kapag sigma squared, variance, pag sigma, it is the standard deviation. Parehong population kasi, Greek letters. Let's take a look at another example. So, remember the steps here. Ano nga ulit kinawa natin? So, in-square natin isa-isa, kaya naging ganyan po. And then, in natin lahat. Ito po yung total. Ano ang tawag natin dito? Sum of squares. 
What's the formula? The formula is variance formula, sum of squares divided by n minus 1. So the difference is that kanina's population over n, pag sample, it's n minus 1. Um, kasi daw para isa lang itong estimate eh. Hindi natin nakuha yung buong population. So ang data natin sa sample and we're just trying to estimate. Kaya siya ginagawang n minus 1 so that our estimate will not be so um, our the number of our estimate ay hindi masyadong malaki. So let's um, put the data into the formula. So ayan po. So meron na tayo ng variance. Now remember what we have to do. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So square root natin. Okay, ito yung second part. Square root natin. Now we obtain the standard deviation. So that's your quick refresher on the measures of variability. So kung ang central tendency, ang measure niya ay yung gitna, kaya siya tinawag yung central tendency, most of the time it describes the middle values kung ano yung nasa gitna, kung, gaano, um, kung ano yung number na bre-represent sa kanilang lahat. Ang variability naman, ang measure niya ay kung gaano kalayo ang mga numbers na ito sa isa't isa. So kapag mataas ang variability, mataas ang standard deviation, mataas ang variance, ibig sabihin mas layo-layo ang mga numbers sa isa't isa. Okay? Kapag mababa ang standard deviation o mababa ang variance, ibig sabihin ay dikit-dikit o magkakalapit yung mga numbers sa isa't isa. Okay? So, here's one way to imagine it. So, let me ask you, what's the relationship between sample size and variability? Kapag mas marami bang Pag mas malaki ba ang sample size, mas marami kang in-interview, mas marami kang pinasagot ng questionnaire, ano mangyayari sa variance? Mababa o mataas? Here's the answer. Kapag marami kang participants, mababa ang variance, mababa ang standard dev. Pag konti ang participants, kalat-kalat yung data mo. Mataas ang variance. That's how the theory goes. So, this is an illustration. Ano yung ibig sabihin natin ng kalat-kalat at tikit-tikit? For example, sa covered court ng institution nyo or sa quadrangle ng institution nyo, kapag konti ang tao, layo-layo. Okay, kanyari, social distancing. Pag konti ang tao, layo-layo. Pero kapag maraming tao, tikit-tikit. That's one way to illustrate the relationship of sample size and variability. Now let's learn how are we going to use this software to obtain these measures of central tendency bago tayo pumunta sa variability at sa correlation. So ayan. So unang example natin ay okay, nagkaroon po na isang seminar dito lecture. The short-term effect of a lecture on attitudes towards illicit drugs was studied by measuring 10 students' attitudes about drug abuse, both before and after they attended a persuasive anti-drug lecture by a former addict or a former substance user. Using the following attitude scores, higher scores indicate more favorable attitude towards drug use, determine if there are differences in the attitude before and after the lecture. Let's see. What are the results? Okay, so this is your data set. I-input natin siya doon sa software. Hindi kasi tayo pwede mag-type sa JAS. Yun yung weakness niya. So i-encode natin siya sa Excel. And we're familiar with encoding. So we know that this is how it should look like. Okay, group 1. Group 1. I Sorry, um, before and then after. And then, para mailipat natin siya sa jazz, mer mapili kasi sa format si jazz. Eh. Meron lang siyang pinipiling format. Okay? Hindi natin siya isa-save lang basta-basta. But rather, in our file, we should click on save as. And then, pipili do sa save as type. Don't save it as Excel workbook. But rather, you should choose this one. The one highlighted. Okay? CSV. So, CSV lang po ang tinatanggap na format ng jazz. 
and then save it. Then I advise that you download Jazz from, um, from the internet. It's free. And then this is how Jazz looks like. Okay, so sa unang tingin pa lang, kung makikita nyo, di ba, napaka-user-friendly niya. Um, for me, SPSS and Statistica are, they perform what they, they perform their functions. However, hindi siya masyadong user-friendly sa mga students. So it takes some experience for you to understand how to use it. Unlike Jazz, pwede yung pwede natin ituro sa undergrad students natin. So, to open your file, we need, we need to open Jazz and to look for the file that we saved. So, click natin itong tatlong linya na ito na nasa upper left. Tapos, hanapin natin yung file kung saan natin ito sinave. So, in my case, I save it in the desktop. So, doon ko siya hahanapin. And, pag na-open na natin yung file, this is how it should look like. So, look at the interface of Jazz. It's very simple. It's very easy to understand. So, makikita nyo dito sa taas. Nandito yung descriptive stats, t-test, ANOVA, regression, and some other stuff here that I don't, that I barely use. Okay, and eto po, naka-encode na yung data natin dito. Kung, pa, kung ano yung itsura niya sa Excel, ganun rin yung itsura niya dito sa Jazz. So, let us proceed. Paano ba natin ito gagawin? First and foremost, back to our discussion earlier, we need to determine if Tama ba yung level of measurement ng mga variables natin? So, una, paano natin siya gagawin? May nakikita kayong mga logos, maliliit na icon sa tabi ng bawat variables. Ito po, ito at ito. So, to change the level of measurement, you have to click on those icons. Okay? Tapos magda-drop down yung box. Okay? You have to choose. So, ito po student. Siyempre nominal yan. Okay, and then ito po yung attitude nila before and after. And this is considered interval and interval are, cons are interval ratio. Yan po ay classified as scale. So, yun yung pipiliin natin. Remember, di ba sa SPSS, scale din yung tawag sa interval at ratio. So, once you have changed those things, we can proceed. Okay, so ang gagawin natin, Click nyo po yung descriptives. Ito po yung naka-highlight. And then, magbabago yung itsura ng screen nyo from number 1 to number 2. It will look like this. So, tatanungin sa'yo ni Jazz, anong variables yung i-analyze mo. So, to do that, you need to drag using your mouse from left side to the right side yung mga variables. So, ayan, ililipat mo sila doon sa right side. This is how it should look like. Nasa right side na sila. Okay? And then, tingnan nyo. Unlike SPSS na maglalabas pa siya ng ibang window, na makikita nyo yung output, suggests it's very user-friendly. Dahil tuwing maidadagdag ka from left to right side, ina-update nyo yung table na nasa kanan. At ito na po yung result natin. Ano yung valid? Ito yung dami ng participants. So, 10. Okay? Na-count niya yung 10 na mga bata na lumahok dito sa study natin. And look, it shows mean, standard deviation, the minimum value, and the maximum value. Okay, so, we can go further. Makikita nyo kasi sa baba po nung left side, meron statistics dyan na part. So, kapag naklik nyo po yung arrow na yan, makikita nyo na maraming iba't ibang statistics ang kayang i-report sa yun ng jazz. So, chechekan mo lahat ng gusto mong gamitin. Okay, so, chinegan ko lahat ng kailangan ko and this is how the updated table should look like. Okay, so, ayan. Um, kompleto na siya. Mean, median, mode, standard deviation, minimum and maximum, before and after. So, sample right up here on the right. The students answered a survey about attitude towards drugs before and after a lecture. They had a more favorable attitude towards drugs before the said intervention. And this attitude decreased after the lecture. So this is how a write-up should look like in your research paper. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, example B. Okay, so ayan, si computer company daw ay nagpapatraining sa kanilang mga empleyado. May dalawa silang klaseng training. 
yung nakaugali, nakagawian, customary, and meron silang tinatawag na new and improved training. So, may clue na siguro kayo saan pupunta itong study na ito. Mas magaling ba yung mga nag-undergo ng new and improved training compared to those na nag-traditional training. So, yan yung gustong aralin ng researcher natin. Okay, so ayan. In-encode natin sa Excel. Nilipat sa Jazz. This is how it should look like. Okay, remember na palitan ito to scale. Once you have done that, click on Descriptives. Transfer the variables from left side to the right side. Click on Statistics and check everything that you want to obtain na mga numbers. And then the table will be on the right side. Then, there you go. This is how your table look like. So, anong conclusion natin? Okay, sa custom, customary training, nakagawian na training, okay, yung kanilang performance ay actually mas mataas compared sa mga nag-new and improved training. So, hindi talaga siya improved. Bago lang siya, pero hindi siya improved. Therefore, our conclusion here is that the employees of the company who have been through the new and improved training actually perform worse compared to those who have been through the customary training. So, pwede nyo itong gamit sa company nyo. Nung nagbago tayo ng training technique, gumaling ba yung mga employees natin or nag-worsen ba? So, research is actually useful in industrial organizational psychology. Okay, so problem C. This is a study that is frequently mentioned in experimental psychology and look at this so si researcher they're interested if the swearing saying profane, um, profane words saying um, harmful words does it help you tolerate pain so it's interesting right so what they did is this they recruited some participants and ang ginawa nila 18 participants pinaghiwalay nila, yung isang group magsasabi sila ng neutral words, yung isang magsasabi ng curse words. Okay? Tapos, gagawin nila yun habang sila ay nakakaramdam ng pain. So, how did they induce pain in this study? They induce pain by making the participants immerse their hand in an icy cold water. So, bakit ganun yung experiment nila? Remember, in psychology, we have to be ethical researchers. Hindi naman siguro pwedeng pokpokin natin yung kamay ng respondent natin or kuryentihin sila. So, you need to think of a safe way to induce pain. And they were able to do it by, by they were able to do it by making the participant immerse his hand on icy water. So, iba kapag binababad natin yung kamay natin sa yellow, yun po ay masakit kapag matagal. So, that's the IV, okay, the groupings, neutral and swear words, okay? And then, the DV is, kaana mo kayang itolerate yung pain. So, they ask these participants to report the amount of pain that they feel on the scale of 1 to 10. So, let's use Jazz to analyze this. Okay, you know what to do? Use Excel, save as CSV, open Jazz. Open the file, then it should look like this. Here's your numbers, here's your data. Change the level if necessary. So scale, then click on descriptives once you are ready. And then if you want to add more numbers to your output, click on statistics and check on everything that you want to check. Then your output should be on the right side. Okay, look at these findings. Sino yung mas mababa yung pain na na-report? Swear group or neutral group? Swear. So they were able to conclude in their research that swearing actually helped us tolerate the pain that we feel because those who were in the swear group reported lesser amount of pain compared to those who were in the neutral group. Here's the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, so... Those are interesting findings. Okay, so ayan. So here's an interesting, another interesting study is this. 
a researcher is interested about the shopping behavior of men and women and he wants to answer two interesting questions so who spend more time shopping men or women and who covers more distance while shopping before we proceed let's take a look at the data set here may napapansin ba kayong kakaiba it's not like the first three bakit instead na maging group 1 at group 2 ginawa natin dv1 at dv2 so parehong dv time and distance yung group 1 at group 2 natin nandito 1 at 2 1 i male 2 i female so nag dummy coding tayo then how do we how can we make just interpret these numbers so ito ay intermediate example okay so ayan instead of separating the data we coded them as one or two we should let just understand the meaning of these numbers so to do that double click here after double clicking on sex magkakaroon ng drop down box ide define natin sila so sa value ng 1 yan ay male sa value ng 2 yan ay female then look na substitute na okay dapat ganito na itsura ng just interface mo and then after that you know what to do next you are ready to run the descriptives transfer the variables from left to right side but this time may bago tayong gagawin at what's what's that split split variable we should split them according to their success male or female so ilalagay natin ito dun sa split variable and this is how it should look like look how it was separated una muna time male female distance male female let's interpret statisticians sa tingnan natin sa time sino ang mas mataas ang average so females spend more minutes shopping compared to men because females in this study shop for 150 minutes compared to the 50 minutes of men okay so look at standard deviation mas malaki ang standard deviation ng females compared to males baka kasi mas layo-layo yung data ng females malay nyo meron pang lagpas-lagpas sa 150 minutes okay sa males naman ay sa distance naman look even females okay outscored males when it comes to distance because females traveled 2.60 kilometers while men only traveled 1.5 kilometers so that's a huge difference okay pero sa standard deviation ay magkalapit lang so ibig sabihin Kahit hindi ganun kalayo, nagsha-shopping yung mga babae, matagal lang talaga mag-scan ng mga products. That's our conclusion from this study. And I borrowed this from Andy Field. If you know um, who Andy Field is, he is the author of Exploring, uh, exploring Statistics Using SPSS. So now, we can proceed to our to the next part of our lecture which is correlation i'm just going to switch to another powerpoint okay so actually this second lecture was the webinar i delivered to my students but it still um, served the purpose of this um, talk so i'm going to switch to the to that other powerpoint for you to understand what correlation means let us try to look at some of our day-to-day -day experiences. Say, for example, what can you say about your skills riding a bike? Okay, so would you say that you are good in riding a bike? So I know that not all of us here are, are very good in this skill. So if you're one of those people who are very good in riding a bike, what would you say to those who are not so good? Perhaps you would tell them, 
you need more practice. Because the more practice, then the more developed your skills will be. So, if you would like to learn how to ride a bike, then ex it is expected that you are going to practice how to ride a bike every single day. And the more you practice this skill, the more that you become adept. Mas lalo kang gagaling. So, is there a, is there a relationship between time spent practicing and skill? Pwede. Okay? So, are those two variables related? Pwede. And what are those two variables? Time spent practicing and your skill. Same goes for this. Do how to do more push-ups. So, the more you practice, then the more na mag improve ka. But if every single day, binabawasan mo yung dami ng push-ups na kaya mong gawin, ano mangyayari sa skill mo? Eh di siguro bababa din. Pero if every single day you try to do more push-ups than yesterday, then perhaps you will perform better tomorrow. So the more practice that you, the more time you allow to practice, the more you develop your skills. Same goes for music, right? So the more you practice, the more skilled you are. So as we can see, correlation is not just something statistical. This is something that we see every day. That if something changes, something else may change. Okay, sabay silang magbabago. The more testing kits, then pwedeng the more cases, more positive cases. Mas maraming tao, mas matrafic. Okay? The more that people go outside their houses, then the higher the chance that people will catch um, the virus. Okay? So, that's how we apply correlation in our day-to-day -day experiences. Marami pa tayong makikita examples niya. So, this is just the introduction. Here are the possibilities. Possibly, tulad ng sinasabi ko kanina, that the more you practice, you improve. Okay? Like you get better with more practice. So, that's a trend, right? But, be honest with me, not everyone who practice something ay nagiging magaling na kaagad sa bagay na yun. So, what are the other possibilities? You are practicing continuously, but your ability does not change. For example, you would tell me that even though I practice singing every day, singing is not for me. So, is that possible? Pwede. Okay, may mga ganyang cases din. And, eto siguro, uh, mababa yung chance na mangyari, na mangyari itong number three. The more you practice, the worse you become. I don't think so. Okay, siguro ma sobrang baba ng chance na mangyari ito. But, Binigay ko itong mga examples na to so that we will be able to understand the different types of relationships among variables. Okay, so ano yung tawag sa number one? Habang tumataas yung isa, tumataas din yung isa. The more practice, the more skilled you get, you get better. That is what you call positive relationship. As X increases, Y increases as well. Habang tumataas yung isa, tumataas din yung isa. Number two, look at this. One variable changes, but it does not influence the other variable. That is what you call low relationship, mababang relationship. That is also, may possibility rin na no relationship. Zero, walang relationship. Okay? Either low relationship or totally absent na correlation. And number three, the more practice, the worse you become. So, as one variable increases, the other decreases. Ang tawag naman dyan po ay negative correlation. So, um, try to think of some examples na magpo-fall sa positive, sa no correlation, at sa negative correlation. Okay? So, one example of negative correlation is this. The higher your commitment to your job, then, mas mababa ang chance na mag-resign ka. 
Okay, so the higher the stress, the lower the job satisfaction. So you need to know what kind of relationship am I expecting from these variables. Okay, now when you do your research, your thesis, you will take two major directions, okay, in quantitative. You can either compare or correlate. So, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about correlational. Next time, we're going to discuss comparative. Pag sinabi natin comparative, it's like what we do in our, it's like what we did in our first experiment. So, lalaki at babae, who spends more time shopping? Who burns more calories? Who are happier? Goat owners or dog owners? Who are more violent? Those who watch violent TV shows or those who watch neutral TV shows? So, yun yung comparative. You can compare two, three, four groups, as many groups as you want. Okay? And for today, hindi yun yung titingnan natin. We're going to take a look at correlational research. So, sa correlational, tinitingnan natin yung relationship ng variables. So, kapag tumataas ba isang variable, may tumataas din pang iba pang variable. O kaya naman, pwede na naman na ina-assume natin na kapag tumaas yung isang variable, yung isa ay bababa. Okay? So, kapag kunyari, research mo, kunyari engineering ka, kapag ba dinamihan natin ang kalsada, bababa ang traffic, ba? Pwede yun. Um, additional roads or additional highways. Okay? So, so, what I'm trying to show you is that correlation, regardless kung anong field ka, you are going to use these two approaches in research. Okay? So, your field can be engineering, it can be healthcare. Okay? In medicine, definitely, they're using these approaches. Okay? So, you need to be equipped with the basic knowledge. Ano yung pinagkaiba nitong dalawang direction na ito sa research? Correlational, okay, is what we're going to talk about today. How do variables relate to each other? Okay. Now, back to our very first meeting, I defined what variable is. Variable, if you remember, is something that changes. So, yung variable, yung oras ng tulog mo, pabago-bago yan, yung dami na nakakain mo, yung traffic sa yung amount ng traffic sa isang kalsada, yung length ng what's this? length ng treatment sa isang patient, okay? At marami pang iba na pwedeng mag-vary, aggression, happiness, job satisfaction, um sweldo, happiness, okay? And so many things. So, if that is the mean of variable, anything that changes, so what is the meaning of covariance? Diba? Merong co-pilot, co-author, co-operate. So, ano yung covariance? Pag sinabing covariance, if one variable changes, other variable changes as well. Kapag may nagbabago na isa, ang isa pang variable ay nagbabago rin. The simplest way to look at whether two variables are associated is to look at whether they Covary. So that's the um, that's the basic premise. Kung kung nagbabago yung si A at dahil sa pagbabago ng A nagbago yung B, pwedeng related sila. Okay? So supply and demand. So if demand changes, the supply will change as well. Then perhaps they are related. Kapag tinataasan natin yung sweldo ng empleyado, nagiging mas masaya sila. So nagbabari sila at the same time. Are they related? Pwede. Okay? So, the more you exercise, the healthier you are. So, gumaganda ang health, duma humahaba ang time for exercise, they vary with each other. Habang nagbabago-bago yung isa, nagbabago-bago din yung isa. So, perhaps they are related. You notice that the more you study, the higher your scores are in an exam. So, what will you do? The next time na mag-exam ako, tatagalan ko pa yung study time ko. Because I believe that 
if I change the time I spent studying, then perhaps my score will change as well. So if they vary with each other, then they are correlated. If we are interested in whether two variables are related, then we are interested whether changes in one variable are met with similar changes in the other variable. Be careful, I would like to remind you, na hindi porket ang dalawang bagay ay correlated, ibig sabihin may cause and effect relationship na sila. If you remember my example in class, I've read this very unscientific conclusion in social media. What does it say? The more that you go to opera house, the longer your life will be. Habang mas mupunta ka sa opera house, mas mahaba ang buhay mo. Well, maybe they found something um, about going to the opera, to the theater, that makes your life longer. Pero if you look at the logic of the of that argument, ang layo nila sa isa't isa. So, as a responsible researcher, you might think, maybe it's not it's not the attendance to the opera that makes my life longer. Pwedeng may iba pang mga variables na pumapagit na. If you remember, what's our term for that? Mayroong mga mediators, may mga pumapagit na. It's not really yung pagpunta mo sa opera house, yung nagpapahaba na buhay mo. Meron pang ibang mga bagay. So, that's the thing about correlation. There's no cause and effect relationship. Porikit may correlation. So, maybe you will research kapag ba mas mahaba yung length ng buhok ko, mas maraming tao sa labas. Maybe, makita mo, significant ang correlation nila. Pero, in reality, there's no relationship between the length of your hair and the number of people outside. Okay? So, correlation does not imply causation. Okay, so that's the caution about it. So, kung sa tingin natin may relationship yung dalawang bagay at gusto nating patatagin pa yung relationship, gusto nating ma-establish yung cause and effect relationship nila sa isa't isa, what are we gonna do? Then, after you establish your correlation, you can proceed to another study and do an experimental study. Okay, isight mo yung dati mong study, nakita namin ang correlation in our previous study, then this time, why don't we try to um, find if there is a cause and effect relationship by doing an actual experiment? Okay, so, kaya tayo mag experiment para matanggal natin yung mga confounding or extraneous variables na pwedeng maka-influence sa, sa ating study. Okay, so, that's what I have to say about correlation and covariance. So, some examples, habang mas, sa mag-asawa, pag mas matanda yung lalaki, mas matanda rin yung babae. So, correlated yung age. Okay? And there are so many examples. If you look around your um, current situation, you will find that a lot of things are related to each other, but hindi necessarily cause and effect and relationship nila. There are various types of correlation. First, like what I told you earlier, we have what we call positive correlation. So, pag sinabing positive correlation, the more you, uh, as X increases, the other increases as well. Okay, so, for example, nag-aral ka ng 5 minutes, ang score mo, 5. Ito, nag-aral siya ng 10 minutes, ang score niya, 10. Ito, nag-aral siya 30 minutes, ang score niya, 30. So, is there a relationship between... The length of time studying and the score, pwede. Pwede meron. Positive correlation. Ne next, negative correlation. So, pag sinabi negative correlation, this shows that as one variable increases, the other decreases. So, ano yung pwede example dyan? Habang tumatanda ang isang tao, humihina siya. Nababawasan yung strength niya. For example, this guy is 20 years old. Okay, mataas yung strength niya. This guy is 40, bumaba na ng konti yung strength niya. This guy is 70, siya yung may pinakamababang strength. Okay? Pag no correlation naman, look at this, wala tayong pattern na makita. Kalat-kalat yung dots natin. It's all over the place. Therefore, the variables are not related to each other. There's no connection between the variables. Okay, so... 
um, ayan. So, now. Let's take a look at some real examples. So I borrowed this um, infographic from, um, from the city of Manila. And what can we see in this chart? Ano siya? Positive or negative correlation? Positive. Why? Nakikita natin yung trend niya pataas. Okay? Kahit hindi masyadong steep. At least nakikita natin yung trend pataas. So what does this table say? Habang tumatagal... Lalong tumataas ang dami ng COVID cases. So, positively correlated last week. So, hopefully, as time goes by, ma-reach natin yung negative correlation. Na habang tumatagal, bumababa ang new cases. Hopefully. Okay? So, yun yung negative correlation. Now, Ang tawag doon sa tinignan natin kanina, direction of relationship. Positive, negative, no relationship. Bukod sa direction, isang bagay pa na pinibigay sa atin ng Pearson R ay ang strength ng relationship. So, what you can see here on the screen, lahat po sila positive correlation. Positively correlated, sorry. Pero, bukod sa isa. Kasi yung isa yung nasa pinaka-left, look at this, correlation is zero, no relationship. So what you will notice is that pag pumupunta tayo sa right, what can we say about the relationship between A, B, and C? Yung relationship ba stronger or weaker? Stronger. How can we say if a relationship is getting stronger? Tingnan natin yung mga tuldok. Nagdidikit-dikit ba sila sa isa't isa? Yes. Okay, so ano yung pinakadikit-dikit? Letter A, letter B, or letter C? Letter C. So among the three, letter C has the strongest relationship. Letter A has the weakest relationship. Ano yung B? Moderate relationship. Before you run correlation analysis using JAS, here are the following things that you need to understand. First, if you remember our discussion about research methods, you need to, a scientific method, you need to state your hypothesis. As a researcher, before you conduct the study, you need to clarify what is the hypothesized direction of the variable. Positive ba yan or negative? Okay, so this is how it would look like. Example, before I show you the uh, compositive or negative ba ito, First, you need to know HO and HA. Pag sina sa lahat ng research, kailangan alam mo yung HO at HA. You need to state this. Okay? So, you need to be clear to your reader. Pag sinabi natin HO, it means null hypothesis. Okay? Pag sinabi yung HA, alternative hypothesis. Pag sinabi kasi natin null hypothesis, this is the type of hypothesis that allows you to hypothesize that there is no relationship. So, ito yung kabaliktara ng ating alternative. Pag sinabing null, hina-hypothesize natin bilang researcher, hindi natin tinatanggal yung possibility na walang relationship. So, ganyan lagi ang format ng null. There is no relationship. So, kapag HA, there is a relationship. So, yun yung pagkabaliktara niya. Okay? In real world, in the real world, hindi na masyado pinapakita yung null if you read research, ang pinapakita na lang yung HA. Okay? But I need to teach you the basics. That's why you need to know what a null hypothesis means. You will use this in experimental psychology as well as in research methods. Okay? So, ayan. So, let's use this as an example. Let's try to investigate the relationship of exercise and depressive symptoms. So, first, you need to state your hypothesis. Null muna. So, as a researcher, you would say that there is a hypothesis that there can be no relationship between exercise, time spent exercising, and depressive symptoms. Then, next, state me alternative hypothesis mo. Ano yung tinitingnan mong direction ng research nyo? Okay? Look at this. What did I say here? There is a negative relationship between time spent exercising and depressive symptoms. Why did I use this example? Because I would like to Elaborate on this one. First, bakit negative relationship? 
Did you know that in abnormal psychology, there are studies saying that one way to mitigate depression or depressive symptoms is to allow the client to engage in exercise. Exercise is one of the treatments for depressive symptoms. Okay, so bucket negative relationship. What we're saying is here is that the, the more that the client exercise, then bababa ang kanyang level of depression or depressive symptoms. Okay, so ayun po, kaya siya naging negative relationship. The more you exercise, the lower the depressive symptoms. So, tip, when you are trying to come up with a hypothesis, you can read other research. Para mat pag tinanong sa'yo ng panelist mo, so paano mo nasabing negative ang relationship niya sa alternative hypothesis mo, your support will be coming from the other research because we have read 5 to 10 studies saying that that exercise mitigates the symptoms of depression or major depressive disorder. That's why we also hypothesize that there is a negative relationship between these two in the study that we are conducting. Okay, so ayan. So, ayan. You need to state, ano ba yung tingin mo relationship ng variable? Positive ba or negative? So, nakita ba yan dito? Yes. So, we have achieved the objective of this slide. Let's take a look at the next one. Next, you need to understand significance. First, how do you understand significance? Siguro in English, eh, ang isipin nyo, significant means important. Significant, mahalaga. But in statistics, Significant doesn't mean important, it means unexpected. So, anong example natin dyan? For example, merong limang magkakapatid. I watched this in a documentary on TV. May limang magkakapatid, lahat sila may dwarfism except one. Okay, so lahat sila, ang height nila ay 4'8". But their um, youngest is 5'7". Okay, so significantly different ba siya compared sa mga kapatid niya? Yung matangkad? Yes. Kasi in that context, hindi inaasahan na siya ay magiging kakaiba. Another example. Kung ang height ng lahat ng kapatid mo ay 5'2 at ikaw ay 5'3, are you significantly different? Hindi naman. Kasi kahit 5'2 silang lahat at 5'3 ka, hindi malaki ang pagkakaiba. So, it's not unexpected. Okay? Expected pa rin yan. Ang unexpected ganito, all your brothers are 5'2", but you are 6'1". Unexpected yan. So, significantly different. Another example, 1 to 100 na exam, all of your classmates got 60, then you got 90. Are you significantly different? Yes, because in that context, your score was unexpected. So, to establish significance, gumagamit po tayo ng alpha level. So, ayan po. Um, before we go to alpha level, another example, HO, there is no relationship between income and job satisfaction. Alternative hypothesis, there is a positive relationship between income and job satisfaction. So, the more you earn, the happier you are in your job. So, sige. Pag sinabi natin significant ang relationship in the context of correlation, it means that the alternative hypothesis is true. Okay, so kapag nag-significant ang relationship nila, ang totoo, okay, ang true ay yung HA. So nagkatotoo ito. Pag sinabi significantly related ang ang height at ang talino, it means that totoong may relationship between sa height Tsaka sa talino, nakapag mas matangkad ka, mas matalino ka. That's just an example. So in this case, if nag-significant ang relationship ng income at job satisfaction, it means that the more you earn, the happier you are in your job. It also means that the result of the analysis can be generalized from sample to population. Remember, because we cannot get everyone from the population, kumuha lang tayo na sample. Perhaps 100 na empleyado. So, we gave them a survey, tinanong natin magkano income nila, at kung masaya ba sila, then nag-significant yung relationship, then eh, we can conclude na siguro sa lahat ng mga empleyado sa company na to, kapag mataas ang income, ay mataas din yung job satisfaction. So, that's another implication of significance. Kapag significant, hindi lang siya totoo sa 
sample. Totoo rin siya sa population. So, if the relationship is not significant, then it means pwedeng totoo yan sa sample, pero hindi yan totoo sa population. So, it is not generalizable. Okay, so, one more thing to understand before you run um, the Pearson R or the correlation analysis, you need to understand significance. So, to know if the relationship is significant, we set the alpha level. And in behavioral sciences, we basically have these three widely used alpha levels, the 0 0.05, 0 0.01, and 0 0.001. And this is a very complicated topic in statistics, but I will try my best to explain it in simple terms. Okay, so if explain ko muna ng mababaw, then explain ko ng malalim, hopefully you'll be able to understand it better if I do it that way. Okay, so eto po. Ang ibig sabihin ng alpha 0.05 sa mababaw na paraan ay una, i-convert natin into percentage. So from decimal times 100, 5%. Okay? 5%. Ibig sabihin, 95% confident tayo sa ating result kasi 5% chance lang ang pagkakataon na nagkataon lang ang mga findings natin. Okay? So, I will restate it in English. We are 95% confident about our results because there is around 5% chance or less that our result happened by chance alone. Gusto natin mababa yung alpha level para mababa yung chance na nagkataon lang ito. Ayaw nyo naman siguro ng, ng research result na nagkataon lang. You want to be confident about your research results. Okay? Typically, in behavioral sciences, acceptable na 0.05. Pero minsan, may iba na sa research nila, ginagamit nila ang 0.01 at sa iba 0.001 pa. Kasi pag 0.01, ibig sabihin 1% chance lang na nagkataon lang yan. Okay? What does that mean? Papayag ka ba na... It, it can also mean you 1%. It can also mean na may 1% chance na magkamali ka sa conclusion mo. Okay? Nakakatakot yung 5% chance na magkamali ang finding mo. Kaya sa medical research, minsan hindi ginagamit yung 0 0.05. Nakakatakot yan. Ginagamit nila yung 0 0.01 or 0 0.001 so that there's a very small chance that the result happened only by chance. Okay? So, kaya ang isang example dito ay yung sa safeguard. It can kill 99.99% of germs. May natitira pang 0.01%. We are we never say that we are 100% confident about our result because there is always what we call error. Okay? So, eto po. But don't you worry in in statistics class, tinuturo ito manually, pero suggest na ang bahala na i-flag yung mga significant correlation kung 0 0.05 ba, 0 0.01 at 0 0.001. And you know the rules sa mga software kapag isang asterisk significant less than 0 0.05, pag 0 0.01 dalawang asterisk, pag 0 0.001 tatlong asterisk. Pag nag-compute po tayo ng Pearson R sa ating JAS or manually if you prefer manual, you will get a number between negative 1 to positive 1. Ito po yung meaning, okay, nung mga numbers na yan. So, pag nakuha mong correlation ay 0, it means that the two variables are not related. Bira po yung mangyari. Okay? Same with negative 1. Pag nakuha mo ay negative 1, it means that there is a perfect negative relationship. That if one variable increases, the other decreases. So, Mangyayari yung negative correlation, pero rarely na perfect 1 at perfect negative 1. Iniiwasan din natin na yung correlation ay perfect negative 1 at perfect 1. Why? If two variables are related perfect 1, it means that parehong-pareho na sila. 
So, ano pong pinagkaiba nila? Okay? So, typically, um, we when we do research, we get around 0 0.60, 0 0.40. Later, I'm going to show you some examples. Let's talk about some other terminologies in correlation. So, we have what we call outliers. Pag sinabi natin outliers, there are person or objects or things differ, differing from all other members of a particular group or set. So, in example, look at this example. Um, first example is Shaquille O'Neal. So, why is he an outlier? This guy attempts almost 10 free throws per game, yet he was only able to shoot 5 out of every 10. So, a typical NBA player might be able to shoot 7 out of 10 shots, but this guy was only able to shoot 5 out of 10. So, bakit siya naging outlier? Some of the sports psychologists would like to say na, supposedly, the, the more that you practice, the more you improve in shooting. But with Shaquille O'Neal, even if he's getting to the line, he is shooting free throws 10 times every game, hindi pa rin siya nag improve So, he is an example of an outlier. So, you and I might improve in basketball. Um, let's talk about free throws only. You and I might improve in free throws the more that we practice, but that's not true for Shaquille O'Neal. Another example is this guy, Sion Williamson. Why is he an outlier? First, ang height at weight by related. Yes, the, the taller you are, the heavier you are. Okay, but look at this guy. This guy weighs like a 7-footer. Yung bigat niya, yung timbang niya, pang 7-footer, pero ang height niya ay 6'6 lang siya. So he is as tall as Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, but his weight, mas mabigat pa siya sa ilang mga 7-footer. So he is an outlier. So sila po, um, example, yung mga obese or yung mga underweight, mga outlier sila. So even if may correlation, parang sila yung malayo sa grupo, sila yung kakaiba. Now, let's proceed to the actual computation. Okay, using just first example. Okay, now that we are in our homes due to the enhanced community quarantine, we are more likely than ever to watch TV. And why don't we use this example? Tingnan natin. Kapag ba mas nanonood ka ng TV, mas bumibigat ka? Okay, dahil hindi ka na nakakapag-exercise. So, this is how it would look like in jazz. Remember, change the levels of measurement if necessary. So, pareho ko po silang sinet sa scale. Okay? Scale po. Pareho silang ratio. Eh. Kaya parehong scale. Okay? So, so, to run the correlation, here's what we're going to do. We need to click on regression. Then, may drop-down box dyan. You need to click on correlation. And then, um, this will happen. You will see this pop-up box in your screen. And then, what you need to do is, you need to transfer the two variables that you would like to correlate on the variable side on the right side. Then, what do you have to um, keep in mind? Dito sa baba, i-check nyo po yung Pearson, kasi ito po yung tinuturo ko sa inyo ngayon. At i-check nyo po yung report significance. So, automatically, ha, si computer na yung maghahanap ng mga significant correlation para sa sa'yo. Okay, so let's run the correlation. Ayan. So, if we take a look at this, what's the correlation? Look at this. Ito po yung correlation coefficient nila. 0.983. Positive or negative? Positive, kasi walang negative sign. Ibig sabihin, as one increases, other in the other increases as well. At nakikita nyo po ba yung tatlong asterisk dito? Significant po yan. Significant po pag tatlong asterisk, ano ibig sabihin? Significant at 0 0.001. Less than 0 0.001. Okay, ibig sabihin, mababa ang chance na magkamali tayo sa ating conclusion. Ang ating write-up, what are we going to say? The analysis showed that there is a significant positive correlation between hours spent watching TV and wait, ibig sabihin, the more that you watch TV, there's a higher tendency na mas mabigat ka. Okay, so that's according to our correlation. Okay, so you, let's question the results of this study. So is it really watching TV that makes us increase our weight? 
siguro may iba pang variable. Yung dami ng kinakain, yung kakulangan sa exercise. So, kaya po, correlation does not establish um, causation. Okay? So, so, that's it. So, basically, that's everything that you need to know about correlation. It was demonstrated in this first example. So, why don't we take a look at some other examples? Okay, so ayan. Maybe, um, because of social media, na-observe nyo na po yung mga younger siblings nyo, as early as 2, 3, 4 years old, sila po ay exposed na sa mga educational videos on YouTube. Tapos, mas magaling sila mag-English kaysa sa atin. So, maybe it's time for us to ask questions like, magiging mas matalino ba yung mga younger generation kaysa sa atin because of social media. Okay? Now, let's see this. So, in this research, ang ginawa po nila ay binilang nila kung ilan yung dami ng mga words na alam mo at age 2. Okay? So, ito po yun. Nasa left side. Dami ng words na alam mo at age 2. And then, hinintay nila mag-high school yung mga bata na yon. So, this study took a lot of time. Okay? At tinignan nila kung matataas din ba yung kanilang grade point average nung sila po ay nag-high school. Okay, so I'm curious about the result of this study. So let's see. Let's run the analysis. Click on regression, then sa drop-down box, click on correlation matrix, then transfer the variable from the left side to the right side, then check on what you have to check. So ayan po, report significance. You can also check flag significant correlation para makita nyo na po agad yung mga significant relationship, then here's how the result will look like. Ayan, so same as earlier, what can we say? Is it, is it correlated? Yes. Positive or negative? Positive. So as one increases, the other increases as well. Significant ba? Yes, because you can see an asterisk here. One asterisk, less than 0 0.05. Okay, so our conclusion is, there is a significant strong relationship between the number of words known at age 2 and GPA in high school, R is equal to 0.91. This means that if a person knows more words at age 2, then there is a tendency that he will also have a high GPA when he reaches high school. So, I hope that at this point, you understand how to use correlation in research when you are trying to know how do your variables relate to one another. So, I highly advise using correlation when doing an undergraduate quantitative study. Why? Because it's um, it's easy to do. Mabilis siyang gawin. So, if you can see our analysis here, ang bilis lang niya gawin sa computer, you just need to know the basics. Yung mga diniscuss ko kanina, yung positive, negative, strong and weak correlation, significant or not. So, let's see if we have another example here. Okay, so if we can correlate two variables, why don't we correlate three? So what are our variables? Okay, we want to know if ano kaya ang... Okay, so let me label this. Exam grade is our DV. This is our dependent variable. Gusto natin malaman ano yung mga nakaka-influence sa pagtaas ng score mo sa exam. So, kinuha nila our study, IV. Pero dinagdagan pa nila ng isang IV. IQ. So, ano nga ba yung nag explain ng score mo sa exam? Yun bang length ng pag-aaral mo? Or yung IQ mo? So, that's a good uh, mag magandang debate yan. So, let's see. Hindi natin kasi ito ma-analyze just simply by looking at it. We need to run this using um, jazz or we need to compute, compute for this manually. For us to draw conclusions about the relationship of these variables. So, it's the result of this, of this research will be very interesting. Take a look at this. Okay, so, um, encode it in jazz. Okay. Ayan po, lahat sila scale. Okay, IQ is interval. Exam grade is considered interval. R study is considered ratio. Student 1, student 2, nominal yan, categorical. From the left side, tinransfer natin sa right side lahat ng kailangan natin. Hindi na kailangan yung student number. Okay, then check what you have to check down here. Okay, then take a look at this. 
Okay, so this is interesting. Why? For the first time in our examples, nakakita tayo ng correlation na positive pero hindi significant. Isa lang ang nag-significant. What does this mean? Look at this. So, ganito po magbasa ng correlation matrix. Titingnan nyo ano ba yung dalawang variables sa pinagtatagpo niya. Okay, so what's this? Exam grade and R study. Ibig sabihin, although, correl although may um, correlation between exam grade and the length of study, it is not significant, meaning it cannot be generalized to the entire population. This is another interesting finding. Look at this. Hindi masyadong mataas ang relationship ng IQ at ng R's studied. So this is very interesting. You know why? Look at this. Pag nung pinagtagpo natin yung IQ at yung exam grade, yun lang yung nagsignifikan. So what is our conclusion? Ano yung mas significant na predictor ng exam grade? Ano yung mas nagpapataas sa grade sa exam? Is it the IQ or is it hours spent studying? In this study, they found out na hindi talaga yung length ng pag-aaral but rather yung IQ. So very interesting finding okay, in this context. Na typically, we would say that it is perseverance that would, that would result to high grades. But in their case, they found out that it's not really um, are studied but rather it is IQ. Okay, yan po yung pinagtagpo natin IQ sa exam grade nung minatch natin sila. Siya lang po yung significant correlation. Okay, significant at 0 .0, 0 0.01 kasi dalawang asterisk. So, that's interesting. Okay, so let's see. Um, what, let's see, let's take a look at some other examples. So, that's what you need to possess that skill as a researcher. You need to know how to make sense of the data. So, sa research nyo, kailangan nyo maipaliwanag. Bakit kaya, in their context, hindi yung R studied ang nagpaliwanag nung mataas na score? Bakit yung IQ? So, how do we explain that? So, my suggestion is, you need to go back to your review of related literature. This is how correlation will look like in real research. So, the title of the research I borrowed is Sense of Relatedness is Linked to Higher Grade in a Collectivist Setting. This is published by Dr. Jesus Alfonso D. Datu. So, let's try to understand the variables first. Una, relatedness, pagiging malapit, pagiging close, social support, kanino galing. Take a look at the variables. Then divide sa tatlo, parents, teachers, friends. Okay, and look at the next one here. Grit. So perhaps it's your first time hearing about grit. So ano po ang grit? Let me define it for you. It is similar to consensuousness, pagiging masipag, pagiging porsigido. So what Dr. Jess Dato is pointing out is this. Kabalik taran actually ng finding sa example kanina because Dr. Jess Dato is telling us that that it is not really intelligence that predicts success but rather in his consistent findings, he found out that it is grit. Pagiging porsigido, yung nagdedetermine if we're going to succeed in life. So, what he's taking a look at is this. Ang pagiging close ba natin sa parents, teachers, at friends ay nakakatulong sa atin na maging porsigido sa ating collectivist na setting. Grit is divided into two components, number four and number five perseverance of efforts and consistency of interest. Yung consistency of interest, ibig sabihin, even if you fail at something, then you still continue okay, learning that topic. So, kahit mag-fail ka sa pag-aaral ng guitar, if you're gritty, if you're high in grit, then you will, steep, you will still keep trying to learn how to play the guitar. So, tingnan natin. As you can see, almost everything is significantly related to each other. Let's take a look at this. So, yun nasa taas po, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They also stand for the variables na nasa left side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, that's the APA format. One, numbers na lang instead na i-define pa nila ulit. So, let's take a look at some interesting correlations here. So, let's see this. So, 
Ang mga hindi masyadong related ito. So, 3 at yung 3 at yung 5. So, ibig sabihin, relate, yung pagiging close sa friends, hindi siya masyadong predictor. Hindi siya masyadong related sa pagiging consistent sa interest mo. Mas mababa ang relationship ng 4 at ng, okay, number 5. So, that's interesting. Uh, interesting why? Because supposedly, yung 4 at 5 ay dalawang components ng grit na related sa isa't isa. I'm just curious kung bakit mababa ang relationship nila sa isa't, sa isa't isa in this finding. But anyway, let's take a look at, at kung bagay yung 4 at 5, sila yung bumubuo ng number 6. Okay, yung number 6, hati siya sa dalawa. Sa 4, sa 5, yung 6 yung total. So, tingnan natin yung finding niya. Since yung 6 naman yung dependent variable natin, dito na lang tayo sa baba tumingin. So, what does this mean? There is a significant relationship between grit and relationship to parents. So, parents play a role in building grit. So, sila yung tumutulong sa atin. Maging porsigido. But, there is a higher relationship between relatedness to teachers and grit. Perhaps, dahil siguro yung mga respondents na dito ay nasa classroom setting. Kaya, ang naging mas predictor ng pagiging porsigido natin ay yung mga teachers. Well, that's an interesting finding. So, that shows the role that teachers play in the society in building perseverance okay, and consistency of interest sa mga estudyante. Ang pinakamababa, although significant pa rin naman, na predictor ng grit ay ang relationship with friends. Point one. Okay, so that's a weak but significant correlation. So, anong sinasabi sa atin nung eto, eto po, yung match ng 4 at ng 6 at yung 5 at 6. Pareho silang significant but which is higher? Yung sa 5. Yung sa 5 and 6. So, ang ibig sabihin nito, ano yung mas mataas na, ano yung mas related sa total na grit? Is it perseverance of effort or consistency of interest? So, although pareho silang significant, mas mataas na predictor ng grit yung consistency of interest. So, what this finding is telling us is this. So, even though if you fail, if you keep on trying, then it's a predictor that you are going to have a high grit or mas tataas ang pagiging porsigido mo. So, that's it. So, at the same time, so ano yung nagbibuild ng grit ng isang tao? Lahat significant. It's parents, teachers, and friends. But the highest um, correlation was observed nung nirelate natin yung relationship of teachers and relationship relatedness to teachers and grit. Kaya ito yung may, sa ta kanilang tatlo, sila yung may pinakamataas na um, correlation. Okay? So, that is an, an example of how do you interpret real research using correlation. Okay, so that's basically it for my webinar. So, I'm showing right now my references for this talk. So, I use these two books as, um, in studying as well as in teaching statistics. Okay. If you have any questions, you can email me. Um, and the email indicated in the screen and if you, I'm also willing to deliver the same talk or lecture or workshop in your institution, organization, or company if you are in need of training in statistics and if you are familiar with SPSS then maybe we can add jazz into your repertoire sa mga kaya mong iran na software sa statistics. And basically, that's it. Thank you for listening to my webinar, and I hope you learned a lot.